for you and I'll send you. Awesome. I'll send it to you. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess we can go ahead and get started so that we don't, I don't hold you up too long. Um, I'd love you to, if you want to start off by maybe kind of introducing yourself, if you could maybe spell out your name for me and then kind of your role at the AI Institute. Um, uh, can you give me the context in which uh, you want me to frame this? Uh, um, so yeah, my, my article I'm working on is um, basically like um, about AI use in education. So um, any, I, you know, I'd love to talk, if you want to introduce yourself kind of from the perspective of your uh, leadership within the AI Institute, that'd be perfect. Or I can, you know, whatever way you're most comfortable. Sure. So, um, uh, you know, it so happens that the provost and uh, VPR and Dean are visiting us on Monday and I'm giving a presentation. So I had this handy, but it, this is a, a kind of an overview. So um, I have worked for three companies uh, and had commercial products. I have done four startups and run, ran two of them as CEO and president and uh, uh, the two others I founded, but did not run them. And uh, I, I have worked for three um, academic institutions or universities where I built uh, large research groups. So uh, uh, the previous place, I was at Wright State University that had the largest um, research center in the history of that university. And now uh, here we started with um, a small number of my people you see on the top uh, left, uh, the few people there. So it includes my PhD students who moved with me and a couple of visitors. And now we are uh, more than 40 people you see in the bottom. So we started in um, 2019 uh, fall. That's when the students moved uh, with me. And uh, we are a little more than three years away uh, you know, since that time. And we have grown quite a bit. Uh, that includes um, six faculty, uh, two um, research faculty, and um, uh, more than 25 PhD students and then other students. So we have grown quite a bit. And uh, we are a rather unique because um, we do a wide variety of things. So on these slides, you'll see, for example, that um, in the middle uh, part, you see a variety of AI things that we work on. And on the uh, outside, we work on broad area of uh, uh, work, multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary transdisciplinary translation research. So this is more applied research where our research gets applied for solving very specific problem. For example, in healthcare, uh, we work on nutrition of type two diabetes patients, neurodevelopment disease, asthma, diabetes, hypertension, autism, and so on and so forth. So, uh, and um, uh, we work with smart manufacturing and we work with autonomous vehicle and we work with um, variety of societal issue, toxic content and deception and misinformation. Uh, and the area that you are most interested in is the uh, you know, area of the law, sorry, uh, education. So here uh, is a summary of um, collaborations going on across the campus with the AI Institute uh, doing the AI or computer science part. And uh, you can see that there's a fairly um, impressive uh, uh, set of activities going on. Some of them are funded projects, others are the projects that we are developing doing preliminary work that will eventually seek funding. Now, there is a lot of story to be told in uh, almost anything that we work on. And, uh, but let me, uh, uh, let me stop here and you tell me what more you like to hear about me or anything else. Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely like a, a wide variety of things. I'm always like, so impressed. Like, I guess my first question would be, you know, with AI being able to do so many different things, I would love just like a description of like what AI is to people. Like, I think people get very confused about like how it is able to do all these things, how it covers so many areas. So I'd love to kind of hear from you what you would kind of describe AI as. Yeah, so uh, a very broader goal of AI is to uh, support intelligence. Uh, there are a lot of things we do in terms of what we call data processing. You process the data, you ask the query, you get the results. 
and uh, if you want to make the systems more intelligent which would then complement the humans where well sometimes uh, replace the humans uh, then uh, these uh, techniques uh, in ai are valuable they are um, uh, the, the largest portion of ai is uh, data driven so very large amount of data that we may collect through analysis of the data we understand various um, um, insights uh, uh, that data gives us and that helps humans make decision so my favorite example is uh, you know uh, called um, augmented personalized health there is a tedx talk on this which i can send you if you remind me um, but here uh, on the left hand side you see a broad variety of ai techniques there are too many of them to go into the picture the most well, uh, to go into detail but the most important is so called machine learning and deep learning and um, you know also the increasingly this conversational ai or chatbots or assistants uh, they um, understand human behavior they understand the data they personalize they can explain they are they are working towards make we are working towards making them safe and when we do that we can help um, in the case of healthcare patients better understand their own health condition so i call uh, you know um, self um, appraisal and then better manage their health a chronic disease you will see the patient um, once every 3 or 6 months uh, the clinician but every day is different day suppose you are you are a mental health patient every day there are different things that happen something bothers you so how do you uh, you know uh, this technology could help you to deal with day to day challenges within the broader framework of care decided in consultation with the clinician as an example so that is called self management it can also be intervention where the technology decides that you need human help it can also be tracking and you know this is tracking and and progression <clears throat> so based on the past <clears throat> data and patterns it can predict uh, how your disease is you know will progress over the period of time so these are there are variety of decision making uh, activities in which ai can help there may be simpler uh, lower intelligence activities like classify oh this belongs to this group versus that group or prediction or it can be hard other things such as uh, here clinical uh, decision making where uh, you uh, have to use the clinical knowledge that just the same way that doctors have to use you have to use clinical practice guidelines just the same way doctors would use in helping decide patient decide what to do so there is a broad variety of uh, uh, challenges that people work on uh, using ai some are simpler easier things others are more complicated things yeah um i did want to kind of talk about one of the things you mentioned i saw that yeah you do a lot of work with like chat boxes for and then you were talking about healthcare but i wanted to ask a little bit more about like education i guess i wanted to see kind of how do you kind of picture maybe educators in a classroom and i'm thinking like ranging from elementary school to college kind of using ai maybe in their classroom right so i can um give you at least three examples let me um uh give you those example then you can ask me to dig further into them but uh the uh a simpler example very simple example would be that i recently last week i had a meeting with the dean of the um library and uh, uh she, he brought along three other senior uh, members of his team and there are a lot of questions about chat gpt which has become very um uh, <clears throat> popular now so it is the fastest uh, technology that reach you know that that fast reach 1 million users um faster than any other technology and uh, there is some people who think that uh, it will replace the search like google search so google search is so important um and in google search of course relies a lot on ai <clears throat> i can explain how google search relies on ai but uh, now instead of searching for something you can have a question um and or you can have a proposition and this guy can really answer that question or 
uh, you know, build a story uh, for your proposition. So, <clears throat> but uh, at the same time, you also realize that uh, the technology, uh, while performing very well in certain circumstances, there is no control over the safety or accuracy. So it can uh, directly lie. So if you ask question, uh, when did um, Hillary Clinton become president of US? And uh, in one reported case, the uh, Chad Gibbity said, Hillary Clinton was the first president of the, first woman president of the US uh, from 2021 to 2024. And um, uh, and and it, it can make up the facts. For example, uh, it can also um, and it's sometimes harder. It's sometimes it is very easy to understand that it is lying or making errors. Sometimes it will be very hard to figure out it is lying. Um, for example, if you ask, uh, ask questions about who is Amit Shet, it made up. Uh, <clears throat> Thing he's the director of, and then he, he it made up the name of the institution. Uh, it said AI, uh, artificial intelligence, and integrated systems. <coughs> In reality, we are artificial artificial intelligence institute of uh, South Canada. So uh, it could make up uh, because I have a lot of work on integration in the past. So it somehow felt that it needs to bring in. It can hallucinate in the sense that you ask him exactly the same question, and two different times he give, gives totally different answers. <clears throat> but the other problem is that when it gives you some very good answers, it's hard for humans to tell apart whether the answer is given by ChatGPT or by human. So, especially on liberal art courses, it's quite possible that students can use ChatGPT and write their essays, 500 word essays or other things, or suppose a student apply, I recently advised the students um, who apply for graduate admissions in the US that they can uh, use chat GPT for writing the personal statement, but uh, be sure to say that's what you did and show how you improved upon it. So that will show your, you know, um, that, that, will, that, will, that will of course prevent you from being characterized as a plagiarism, as well as uh, it will say that you are very up to date. So uh, there are things of that nature uh, that uh, you can do. Now, chat GPT, uh, the chatbots can be used in very broad variety of ways. So I was a, a consultant uh, to a company called uh, Embibe. So this is a, a company and uh, this uh, company, for example, has built a chatbot that helps you learn various courses, right? And um, uh, the advantage it has is that it has a, it keeps a deep knowledge of how much you have learned so far, where are, where are you in learning plan, how well you have learned the past concepts very well, what you should learn next in the uh, appropriate um, selection, you know, uh, uh, appropriate um, progression and so on and so forth. So um, uh, this could be an example of uh, use of a chatbot in personalized education or learning. Additionally, as we speak, uh, we are working on a, a collaborative project. So this project has um, uh, AI Institute, of course, a College of Arts and Science, particularly faculty in geoscience, College of Education, and there are three different groups in College of Education. And it has uh, uh, Richland County School, uh, dis school District, seven uh, course, seven classes, nine teachers, <clears throat> and uh, hundreds of students learning in the high school. And here, uh, <clears throat> the challenge is that uh, the, uh, this particular uh, school is, has a very high uh, diversity, but importantly, it has a very high uh, number of uh, <clears throat> disadvantaged children or students. So it has 55 to 65% um, uh, uh, African American. And there are a lot of students here, they uh, don't go to uh, college. Uh, 
so we took the uh, one uh, STEM course that all need to take and say, can we improve the outcome? Can we make them learn this better? Because learning science is very important. Uh, and we took the course of earth sciences. So for the state of South Kerala, for example, uh, it is beneficial, it's important that our students learn about <clears throat> carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, the impact on environment uh, that these things have. And uh, there are a lot of environmental sensitive uh, issues in, in the state. So uh, no, no knowledge about those will be good, whether they do college or they don't do college. So <clears throat> this is a highly interdisciplinary project where we have faculty from all this area. And um, you are, uh, you see in the bottom here, you see uh, the kind of things that uh, the application uh, would do. On the left-hand side is the study material, target text you see. So that is a part of uh, text for nitrogen cycle. And on the right hand side, they are um, um, uh, working on uh, you know, uh, uh, an area that is very uh, natural for them. It could be an area where you are doing uh, church activity. It could be an area where you are uh, talking about rap music. It could be an area that you're talking about basketball. So these are the domains that they are interested in and uh, can engage very well. And then the technology allows them to uh, build analogy. Uh, so uh, the, the, for a long time, it has been known that analogy-based education is uh, beneficial. It, that is this the learning, but it is very hard to deliver. Mm -hmm. I can go into the details of why it is hard to deliver, but basically we, want to, we are using AI to make it easier to develop analogy-based education. Students are given pre-created analogies. Students can complete partially with analogy and students can uh, develop totally new analogy. Each of these three examples uh, are, you know, are increasingly more demanding. So it's up to the students and the teachers as to what you can do. And understanding that this concept on the left maps to the concepts on the right, that's where we use the AI for. Similarly, the same analogy-based thing we are working with, and we anticipate funding from Bank of um, America. They have uh, a Bank of America Academy, mm -hmm. which is used to retrain their own employees. But they have thousands of employees, and they are asked to uh, be, you know, the, the, the company has a policy to continue to retrain them on various concepts. For example, on financial market, or what does a financial advisor does? Or, uh, you know, what are the cybersecurity challenges? So there, we are also, um, uh, you know, building analogy uh, there for different domain for a different cohort, not the high students, but now elders. And so we are improving the training there. Finally, there is another very interesting, uh, and 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 we have, you know, these chatbots. So we have these chatbots are developed for many uh, very many examples. But let me see if I can get um, um, a chatbot here. In this demo, we um, show a real-time annotated map. And uh, so this presentation demonstrates the solving of Rubik's cube using a periodical planner. We introduced the. So here, uh, essentially, there is a. Uh, an application, a chatbot that helps the students learn. So AI technology helps in the process and understand how the uh, um, um, uh, cubic Rubik cubes works and what are the pros and cons of their choices or decisions they make in solving the puzzle. And it explains the results. So uh, uh, this is uh, a very interesting um, uh, you know, a work which is targeted to, uh, again, high school students or even uh, middle school students uh, and essentially use uh, AI is um, behind most gaming and um, uh, robotics technologies. Mm -hmm. So uh, here, this is that particular use of gaming and um, uh, robotics, uh, you know, uh, that kind of thing to help uh, uh, students 
learn how to solve that and get deeper insight into the solving problem solving process. So I hope that gives you, and I'll be happy to send you the link to this also, and you can study it more. And there are more, uh, uh, you know, items written up on that. So we have um, several um, uh, faculty, uh, and uh, so um, I have a student. Uh, we have a colleague. Uh, so uh, we have a colleague. His name is Forrest. He works on Ruby Cube thing. And uh, uh, we have Biplav, he works on, uh, you know, law related things. Uh, so he recently had a long interaction with law school students. And uh, I am working on those analogy centric thing. So we have um, a comprehensive, uh, and, and this is uh, not all. We also, um, some of our projects, uh, we have a lot of projects. So uh, as you can see here, there are quite a few projects. And some of our uh, um, projects have workforce development part. So then we have also uh, training material and, and uh, student engagement that helps them uh, learn better. So these are some of the things we do uh, for education. Yeah, no, that was really perfect. A really good overview of like a lot of the things I was gonna ask about. I guess you kind of just touched on it too, but I was gonna kind of ask a follow-up of like with, you know, it having, the opportunity to be really beneficial for education, but then also like giving a lot of opportunities for possibly like cheating or, you know, not completing assignments on their own. How could you like, yeah, train professors or teachers to be able to utilize those beneficial parts while not like giving up education for students, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I just mentioned to you that we, you know, one of my colleagues had a long meeting at a school of uh, a college of law, sorry, college of law. Or school of law, and um, students were very interested in how the AI technologies can help you find uh, what is the you know technical implication uh, to the education. What is the implication of this technology to education? Cheating, of course, and all that, and also how do you um, uh, we can build uh, build a chatbot that can help you explain variety of ways the technology can be used. And uh, additionally, uh, there'll be technology, we are not right now working on it, but we could work on the technology where um, uh, we would uh, identify possible misuse. So uh, uh, there is this, if you look at this picture, you see we have a large body of work in what we call social good and social harm. Mm -hmm. So disinformation, harassment, toxic content, deception, right? So deception um, uh, comes in many forms extremism, radicalization, all those. So we work on those kind of uh, things and uh, develop AI algorithms to disc identify these, to find the alternatives and help people, you know, avoid these kind of stuff. We look for uh, misinformation spread during uh, disaster as an example. Uh, so there are many, uh, you know, there are related issues. So we may say on education, we can help you flag things. And there are people working on a um, variety of uh, new technologies uh, for, let's say, uh, watermarking uh, the text. And it's not here, out here, but people are working on it. And so we may bring those things also when there's a need. Right now, we have, thankfully, a lot of interest all across the campus. And we are able to take things that we think are of high value, high impact. Um, which has education, research, and other you know objectives. Yeah, um, I did want to ask: Do you have any examples of things that kind of do like point out something is made by AI? Like maybe or tips for like knowing that something is maybe not fully created by a student by themselves? Yeah, so uh, I this is not an area we are particularly focused on. So that's an area that is just emerging. So uh, the good example is on the. Um, you know, uh, uh, the so this so-called chat GPT is an example of um, what is called in technological terms as large language models and um, interactive version of, uh, interactive use of large language models. And um, I mentioned that, I mean, like we work on several issues. For example, we work on how do you prevent the uh, chat GPT from um, 
hallucinating, meaning give different answers to the same question. Similarly, um, uh, the, the work is very fresh or it's just, um, people are just trying to understand what is the, how, what is the, uh, is there a way to say that this, this uh, text is not written by a human, it's written by a technology. And uh, initial answer is it is extremely hard mm. to the level of being impossible. So um, the answer, you know, this is so new that the issue is not settled. Because okay. ChatGPT just came in December. Yeah. Um, I, what else did I, I did want to ask, so you're talking about the like, um, work that you're doing with the school, like Richland too. Um, when do you kind of, I know you said it was like an ongoing process. When do you kind of know maybe the results of that or how long is that program as well? That is a very good question. So it is a multi-stage uh, um, engagement. To give you one example uh, and a concrete and interesting example is that uh, <clears throat> this is our website. And uh, here we are offering them a summer camp, right? Uh -huh. So um, maybe about 25, 30 students, high school students uh, selected from Richland to would um, come here for a week at the Institute. And um, uh, it is valuable enough for the Richland too that um, with my help, they went to some state agency wrote a proposal and they got funding so that the students would be sent free of cost to the, you know, to, to the students. Uh -huh. uh, I would have expenses, right? I, fac you know, faculty expense and other expenses. So to cover my expenses, they will, they only have funding to send their students. We had written a $1 million proposal, which was not funded, but we care. There's no reason why we may not resubmit it where we <clears throat> change where we discussed uh, how AI will be comprehensively used for, from P to 12, from, from, you know, from, uh, primary, uh, from the pre-K to all the 12. And um, uh, that involves curriculum modification or changes. That involves training teachers and creating new materials. <coughs> So, uh, as a uh, as a plan of uh, as a concrete step towards uh, this project, the bridges project that we I, I mentioned. Uh, right now, uh, uh, several of our faculty, as I said, from School of College of Education, Geosciences, and my team members are working with Richland too, and their uh, uh, their coordinator and. We are. Uh, we have just defined a engagement in the class to create baseline study. Mm -hmm. So we're going to present them how you get teach to, today, taught today, and how you'll be taught using analogy. And then collect the feedback and understand what they like, what they don't like. Do you think they'll be receptive to this? How we may want to change it, and all that. So we have created a safe, safe, specific plan specific evaluation test. And on March 17th, I believe, we go to the school classes and collect the data. Then summer we'll have that um, uh, summer camp, but we are also in the, we'll write the proposal. And then we send it out in the fall for funding. It will be up to $5 million that we'll be asking. So, um, and there are also uh, other challenges that we can discuss, but like, how does that, uh, you know, uh, particularly fit in the context of racial inequality? So I mentioned that uh, demographic 60 some percent of the students are belong to family that are classified as persons of poverty. So we, we are looking at uh, the whole gamut of disadvantage <clears throat> students to um, uh, you know, uh, employees uh, being retrained to college students and professors interested in research. So there is a 
broad variety of things that we are continuing on. What would your like? What would your ideals, hopes for the future of like this program? I guess um, in Colombia and with the AI Institute. Uh, I mean, each of them have different outcomes. So for the analogy project, there is um, available literature that says that uh, students understand more when they are presented with analogy, but there is no scalable uh, method to deliver that analogy to the classroom. So using the AI technology, and I can, you know, so uh, there is a, a very interesting uh, video. Here I have In a video. In this demo, we show a real-time annotated map yeah. for disaster. Bloom's so, taxonomy categorizes so I have a video of Bloom's, you know, of, of this that talks about how we are using, uh, you know, uh, the technology. So this is feedback interface. And here, this is a biological process that they need to learn or biochemical process. Stuff and, and um, the students uh, you know, uh, and the analogies that are there. So for example, the there is a coin pusher analogy. There's a musical chain analogy. Performance. And then you uh, measure that. Study and interestingly, and the results we found was, so the, a professor has taught analogy-based education in a classroom for three years. And he's part of our team. But the problem is that that was all manual work. There's no technology support. So it was very hard to scale. And collecting the results of student evaluations and then grading and all that has been uh, a bear. So uh, this one shows that uh, the, the study that uh, we had done in the past showed that students who were um, very good to start with, there wasn't much impact. But the students that were in the third and fourth quartile, there was more uh, you know, a benefit to them. Mm. So the idea is to uh, say, if that continues to be the case, then the idea is to say that there are students who, uh, you know, in our schools, so many students uh, don't uh, take science courses well. So the idea is to make science more appealing to them. And with the, with the hope is that they would not, you know, uh, shy away from STEM and take up more STEM studies. So that would be the, uh, if they will learn better for, especially the ones who are not in the top category, but the ones who are somewhere in the middle or just below middle, they would, they would have a better learning outcome. So they, all of these things are learning outcomes that we define. And that if you can prove that as a result of this, then we would um, uh, be able to scale out. Now we have a lot of context all around, uh, you know, where we can, once if you can prove this and we can, you know, have the technology, uh, uh, you know, so that it is not a burden on teacher. One of the big problem that, uh, you know, with uh, technology is that if it adds any burden to the teacher or it is hard time for them, hard for them to themselves, you know, understand and deliver, they won't. Mm -hmm. So we have to work on those issues also, but once we can prove that, we think we can scale this and give it to many schools <clears throat> to then replicate this thing. So we do have access to more schools, but we already have access to about six, six more than 600 students for this study. And seven to nine teachers. So we are, we are you know, uh, you know we put, it, put in a lot of effort to create that kind of ecosystem. Yeah. No, that's super interesting. I, I'm very interested to see kind of what the results of that study end up being. Um, I think that is pretty much all of the questions I have for you, but I always like to end um, with the question of basically, is there anything that I didn't get to talk um, chance to ask you about or didn't talk about yet that you think would be important to talk about or mention about the AI Institute? Well, I think one thing is to uh, make sure that um, we convey that, uh, see, this was when the charter of our, um, you know, so this, this started with the, um, uh, research excellence initiative that the president had in 2018 and we ranked top among all the submissions and we were given you know uh, uh, a, a five million dollar uh, to establish this institute 
And uh, most important of all, there are a number of objectives, but one was materials, convergent multidisciplinary activities across USC colleges, industry services in the state. So we have uh, met all those objectives in short time, but what we have done here uh, by you know, using AI in solving so many of the problems is um, more or less uh, is an exception. I don't know of any other, there are some issue, there are some initiatives in AI that have um, uh, gotten a lot more funding. For example, um, here is a, uh, you know, uh, uh, some information where the, you know, they've gotten 10 million, 20 million, 70 million, okay, to do AI because AI has been very popular. But for us, we have spent only uh, uh, half of uh, 5 million. And uh, I don't think anybody has uh, created um, a, uh, except, you know, had exceptional faculty. You look at my faculty, look at the number of collaborations they each do. This, these two guys have been here for only one year. And, you know, the, he has been here for more, just about two years. Right? So, uh, so the, uh, the, uh, so we gotten great faculty. We have gotten great uh, outcome students. So, for example, this is our first PhD student to graduate, and uh, I don't know if you know about the PhD thing, but getting a, a, a he got a 322k offer from Samsung Research. Wow! Uh, but uh, he chose to go to UMBC, which is a tier one Carnegie R1 University, as a faculty, and. Before he graduated, he had more than 1,000 citations. This is unheard of. Wow. And, uh, and many other things. So, uh, you know, a uh, number of other, uh, you know, accomplishments. So, um, we created great students. They also do internship at some of the top institutions in the world. And, uh, and, and then we have taken the projects that are translational and very important. For example, for the state of South Carolina, manufacturing is very important. So I have uh, three projects in collaboration with um, Remy Herrick, who is at McNair uh, Aerospace on smart manufacturing, where we are applying AI to some of the very challenging problems in the manufacturing domain. And uh, in the context, we also train uh, you know, do workforce development. So students from, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, primary undergraduate institution, RUI, and students from, um, uh, uh, you know, the, what is it called? The uh, uh, colleges that primarily serve African-Americans. They take our classes and we expose them. And uh, it's an area where a skilled person in, uh, you know, South Kenya has a lot more job. So, uh, uh, you know, a lot of job possibilities and need. And um, pu public as a whole are looking for not just discoveries from universities, but they're also looking for applied um, uh, skill centric uh, education so that people have better jobs. So, we are working on the whole gamut of uh, issues. Amazing. Well, Thank you so much for being willing to talk to me today when you're sick. Um, I really appreciate it and think it's really um, interesting and relevant information. Um, I heard a lot of great information today. So I really appreciate it and hope you have a great rest of your day. Good. I'll send you the uh, uh, recording. Okay. 